All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how we use first and second derivatives to solve for optimization problems. All right, so with the previous topics, the focus has mainly been on just solving the equilibrium solutions, right? And such problems, we basically call them non-go equilibrium problems, where, uh, for instance, when we looked at the market model, we were just solving for the equilibrium quantity uh, demanded or quantity supplied um, without really setting a specific uh, optimization condition on that uh, uh, problem or solution that we were solving for. So going forward now, when we look at optimization problem, we are now trying to find values that maximize or minimize a specific goal. So for instance, you can have a maximization problem uh, set for the profit maximization. You can also even have a cost minimization problem where you are trying to find values that maximize or minimize, right? And we call them relative extremums. Right, so for instance, if you have got a y function defined by x, what you have is your choice value variable, which is your x. That is the one that you're going to basically uh, solve for. So you're saying what level of your choice variable is going to maximize or minimize the objective function, your y, right? So you're going to choose the value of x such that you find the extremum value of y, the highest possible or the lowest possible value of your y. So for instance, in a profit function, you want to solve the value of q, which is your choice value variable, that maximize your profits, your profits being your objective function. All right, so there are two conditions that you need to satisfy in order for you to actually define a profit maximizing point, for instance, in a profit maximization problem. So the first being that the first derivative, which is going to tell us about the behavior of the value, as well as the second derivative, which is going to explain the behavior of the slope of the curve. All right, so if you recall, when we calculated the first derivative, we said it's going to tell us um, or it's going to define the slope at that specific point, right? So the condition here that is necessary is that when you calculate the slope of that uh, specific point, it has to be equal to zero. The slope at that specific point has to be equal to zero. So if we have identified, for example, your extremum is x zero, right? Then it means that when you evaluate the first derivative of your y function with respect to x, if that specific value x0, then it has to be equal to, to 0. Right. So that now becomes the first necessary condition for an extra mom, sorry. But on its own, it's not sufficient. So we also need to find the second derivative. Right. What makes it insufficient is what we want to explain in the next slide. Looking at these two graphs, basically the one on the left, what you have is um, a curve, right? They are more or less the same, but the difference is that the one on the left, it's continuous but not smooth. And then the one on the right, on my right, it's continuous and smooth. Right. So the one that uh, we really concentrate on or the functions that are of interest for us are basically the ones that are continuous and smooth because we can only get a second derivative on, an, on a continuous and smooth curve. Right. So what this curve is telling us basically is when you look at the points from 0 to x1, the graph is going down, suggesting that when you find the derivative of any point along this curve going down, it's going to be negative. And then the points between x1 and x2, the graph is going up. And if you calculate the slope of any point, which is your first derivative of y with respect to x, you'll find that all the points are going to be positive. Right. So the only point where the first derivative is going to be equal to zero is when you're, when you, you're at the point x1. Right. And then same applies uh, with point x2 right and what you're noticing is that these points are basically turning points and these turning points are what we are calling the relative extremum right 
So they are relative in the sense that they just apply to this specific range of the graph. But you see that point X1 and X2 may not necessarily be global extremums, right? Give, if we are now to extend this function, and they might not necessarily give us the global um, optimal solutions. But in this instance, focusing on this specific range we are working with, we identify them as relative or local extrema. Right. So as the signs change between uh, the two points, that can also guide us now in whether telling in us deciding on whether we are looking at a minimum point or a maximum point, right? So basically, that information is what we can derive from the second derivatives. So at this point, we just have identified the critical solutions from the first derivative, but we also want to understand of the, the behavior of the graph um, around these critical points so that we can make a conclusion on whether it's a minimum or a maximum. So we now bring in the second derivative. All right. So when we look at the second derivative, how we calculate it is basically by differentiating the first derivative, right? So if you have got a y function given as f of x, you find the first derivative by differentiating y with respect to x, right? And then when you differentiate the first derivative, you are basically calculating the second derivative. Right here, we have three different forms of not notation for the second derivative, right? And you are allowed to use any of the three, right? And uh, it's only possible to find the second derivative on a smooth and continuous function. Right. So from your first derivative, as we have already said, it's basically telling us the behavior um, of a specific point. So if your first derivative is positive, it means the value of y on the function is increasing, right? So you see that it was that um, area between x, x1 and x2 in the uh, previous slide. That's when you actually have the value of your first derivative um, being positive. And then when you have the value of the first derivative being negative, it simply says that your y function is decreasing. That's when we're moving from point zero to x1. When you take the second derivative now, um, for instance, where your second derivative is greater than zero, right? It's telling us about the value of your y after the um, it's actually telling us about the behavior of the slope of the, the, the y function, right? So if the slope of the y function is increasing, it simply means that you are moving away from a minimum point, right? You are now going up. And then if the slope of your y function is decreasing, it simply means that you are moving away from a maximum value and the slope is uh, actually going down. It's becoming more and more negative. Right. So these two second derivative basically are the ones that are core when we want to decide on whether we have a maximum or a minimum. So whenever your second derivative is greater than zero, then we say we have a minimum at x star because we are saying the slope of the curve after x star is starting to increase, right? Meaning that we are now moving on the positive edge from uh, basically from your x1 to x2. If we have your second derivative negative, that suggests that you are moving down. Your curve is going downwards. So you are moving from a maximum point that was at your xt. Right. So these um, second derivative, you are basically going to be evaluating them at the optimal values, your x star, right? to then now conclude on the final uh, value, whether it's positive or negative. All right.